God. He's a witness. He's a trial. No, it's not a trial. It's a good thing. Even if you're paying constantly, it's that step for wisdom. Like, it's for our sins. Because we essentially do see God's putting a debt to test us if we do it. So, God can judge us accordingly. What you've described is an evil God. Because in our, in our paradigm, God isn't creating our actions. We do that. God creates our stable universe. God creates Adam and Eve. And then from that, we all come. But our decisions are our own. So when we do genocide, God isn't creating the action. We are. So we are judged for our actions, not God. But in your instance, because God doesn't allow you to have the freedom to choose to follow him or not, but he also creates those evil things that you can do. But the hardship and evil only exists because Allah created it. So God is now the one who is literally creating evil. Well, a, a good God cannot create evil. It is paradoxical. For example, an eternal God cannot stop existing. No, I, I, just, I didn't say that. I said a good God cannot create evil. It's paradoxical. Because evil... Or the, or the sinful actions. It basically is program. I, I, I'll show you. Uh, Something I, I, I remember. We have here Sahih al Bukhari 66 14. It says, The prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, O oh Adam, you are the father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, O oh Moses, Allah favored you with his talk face to face. And he wrote the Torah for you with his own hands. Do you blame me for an action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before my creation? So Adam confuted Moses, Adam confuted Moses, and the prophet repeat, added, repeating the statement three times. So importantly, do you blame me for the action which Allah had written in my fate? 40 years before my creation. So this is fatalism. Uh, another problem, another problem, another problem. So, he's saying that Adam could have freely chosen to sin or not sin. Adam here says, no, you ask me this. Oh, it's predetermined, but he has free will, and at the same time, this is... Oh, you have to do that. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't see, I can't see. Come and see, come and come, come, come see, come and see. Come here for a second, come here. Come and see what I'm seeing. In your scripture, come see. Can you see the person over there? Why would you accept that? I can't see anything, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, you don't? We're gonna go soon, so come. But do you see how on the Christian side of things, we had to have a full option. Like, just be, we can fully choose to go against God if we want. Or we can fully choose to go with Him. And God is not controlling. He's all knowing, meaning He knows if we're going to go against Him. But He's choosing to stay back and be like, you know what, my child. But your God is all knowing, yeah. allegedly. And, but He's choosing your actions. He's not choosing your actions. Okay. You said just now that it was predetermined. Yeah. In that. Okay. So, so, just. I, 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 I blacked up for one second. 
Could Adam have not sinned? Yes. Okay. Perfect. He says Adam could have chosen not to sin. How do we then wrestle with the facts that it says here that Allah wrote this sin into his fate before he existed? I want to know why. How does that work? Yeah, so. And then there's another hadith that says that if, I, if Allah. So, predestination and free will. Incompatibility between uh, predestination and free will is not an issue in major Sunni Islam sources as they held a, ration, uh, they held a rationale that both could coexist. Okay? Now. In order for that to coexist, you would basically have to go against the teachings of Islam. Because ultimately, according to your most shortest hadiths, Allah says that if he made a people who would not sin, he would wipe them out and replace them with people who would sin. So it seems that for some reason, Allah is not interested in a sinless, perfect creation. He is interested in a sinful, damned creation. If he's a good God, I can't reconcile him being a good God with him creating people with defects that would lead him to hell. I agree that this position can, can coexist, but the predestination, predestination or whatever, I can't remember the word. Predestination, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's to do with like when God wants to, you know, he's got a blessing from down the line. Or that there's something that God has constructed, but you can still do things that might affect them. It doesn't mean that that's going to be solid. And, I mean, God's word is God's word, but we have to the butterfly effect. Hmm? I heard of the butterfly effect. When no, you no. Move, the butterfly effect, yes, yeah, sorry. If you do something, just move a little bit, you change your whole future. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe that's predetermination? Yeah, no, I said predetermination and the other thing can coexist, right? Uh, but as a, as a, as a, the, as God, right? Why would you, in all of your goodness and your glory, decide to predestine bad things for your purposes? And it's, we're not talking about we just wanted to use you as an example or people need to learn from this. This life is a test, right? This life is a test, but don't you see how there's an issue now for your salvation? Because if your God is tripping you up, then how can you be saved down the line? The majority of people will never stumble upon the true religion. So again, Allah is okay with the majority of his creation going to hell when he could have simply made them to not sin. Cut off it to the mountains, the trees, but give it to Adam and his son's free will because he was ignorant enough to accept that. How can God offer free will to a mountain when a mountain is not sentient? Then, then maybe the Quran is wrong. Be, because because you, you would agree that in order to utilize free will, you need to be sentient and have rationality. Uh, uh, you need to have a consciousness. Trees are sentient in your in your worldview. Wait, 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 wait. So, sorry, sorry. Are trees consciousness absolutely, or there can be an instance where a tree can be given uh, consciousness? I don't know about this one. Because if that's the case, 
then do trees go to heaven or hell? So, I agree with on the animals part. However, you said that God offered free will to the mountains and trees. And I told you that to have free will, you need consciousness and rationality. In our worldview, we would say that human beings possess both. That's why we can be judged for our actions. But then two of them are needed for free will to exist. So, if Allah is offering free will to the mountains and the trees, do the trees have the capacity, rationality and consciousness to even utilize free will? But the, the trees rejected it. So that means that they have rationality. So if they have rationality, why aren't they judged as being rational beings and go to have no help? Because animals lack rationality. But God offered them something and they said no. Isn't that really like a rejection? So if trees can disobey God, how did the trees say no to God giving them free will? That, that's just a decision I, I'm not going to question, but I'm saying trees can't yeah. disobey God by it's by doing so. They're saying they can't So, if I am your boss and I give you a phone and you have to follow all my commands and you say no, are you obeying me or disobeying me? In order for the trees to make a decision, they need free will. Allah. No, so I, 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 I won't agree with him, right? Because they don't have rationality. So then, how, uh, how can they be judged for their actions? They, they, they have like an animal nature. Yeah. But my problem still remains. These trees apparently have consciousness and rationality. Allah offers them something. Basically, Allah offers them the ability to make decisions. And then they make a decision without having the ability to do so. So Allah offers them yes or no. And they say no before they have the ability to do yes or no. We'll carry on. But my, my, my closing statement, free will in Islam does not exist. What you have is fatalism. I have, I have looked into it, and uh, uh, unfortunately, there's no way of simultaneously holding to Kadar as well as holding to free will. The, the, the two are incompatible. So most Muslims, uh, at least in the, in the Sunni branch, tend to be occasionalists. They deny something that, that we would call secondary causality. God is the first cause of everything. We both agree. However, because God is the first cause and He loves us, He gives us the ability to be secondary causes, aka we can play around in His universe of our own free will. But you guys deny that. You see that God is the first cause and the only cause of anything. So whatever occurs in our reality, it is only by the will of Allah. Then he decides evil, and a good God can decide evil. So evil is not actually an existence. Evil is a lacking in goodness. So Allah cannot lack goodness. So he can't create evil. It's a paradox. God bless. The brother is sincere but confused and um, I will carry on talking to him and see if we can come to a conclusion where I can showcase to him that the beliefs he holds are lacking in a variety of ways. So this is one thing that I've talked about with Muslims before. 
the idea of free will determinism. So very generically, yes, you do have various opinions in the Christian worldview. You have Catholic opinions, Thomistic opinions, personal opinions, all sorts of opinions on how free will works. But generically, all would agree that human beings are given the ability to choose God or choose other free will. And all would agree that God is the primary cause of our entire existence. It says it in John 1, 1, it says it in Genesis 1, 1. So when it comes then to how we rationalize the idea that we commit sins and God knows that we will commit these sins and God knows our ultimate destination, whether it's to him or, or, or to be against him, that does not conflict with the idea of secondary causality. The options that we are making, the routes that we are taking are of our own. God can certainly try to influence us in a non-evasive way, sending prophets, sending messages, giving us dreams. But those things are never to force us down a path. They are to have us come to him freely and choose that. Within Sunni Islam, from what I have seen, they are occasionalists. So they discount the idea that human beings have, uh, can be an independent moral agents. They can choose to do good or bad. It seems that bad or evil, a lacking of good, is actually working through the very fabric of what it means to be a human being in the Islamic context. I gave him the hadith that says that if Allah had created a people who would not sin, he would wipe them away and replace them with those who would. Almost as still as a dependency on us being able to sin and be forgiven for it. My issue with this is the deficiency on the part of God. Because it is an evil thing to create a people who are intrinsically built to fail for the majority of, 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 their, of their species, however, then promise them eternal damnation for something that was built into the very fabric of their character. For us, our concept of original sin or a sinful nature and the idea that the world is torn and degraded and debased comes from human action and continues to be exacerbated by a human action, independent of the direct control of God. But they don't have that. So the problem of evil for them is very difficult to contend with. And I think I've even seen them talking on the internet regarding how to harmonize free will and determinism. And when you dip down into the nitty gritty of it, unfortunately it gets very complicated and you have to accept that Allah knows best. But well, luckily for us, we don't. We can rationalize how the two counteract or also interact with each other and don't contradict. Praise God. All right. See you all later. Let's go.